Welcome to this presentation. I'm going to talk about the sign of stiffened place subjected to axial compression and transverse load. Um, I'm Svan Rune Kleppe. I'm an assistant professor with the Western Norway University of Applied Science. And I wrote this paper together with Arne Olberg, who is a professor from NTNU, and uh, Liv Eltvik, which is a senior bridge advisor. Uh, Stiffening plates or orthotropic plates are used in many structures, for instance, as a plate girder and uh, girder in bridges, as shown here, in ship hulls and in bridge deck to minimize the dead load. Uh, here is a picture and a drawing from the Hardanger Bridge, which is the longest susp suspension bridge in Norway. And uh, this is a typically a cross section. And uh, for this kind of bridge, we are here concentrating at the top deck, which have uh, lateral forces from uh, traffic and uh, membrane forces from uh, global action, load action, as, as written here. <clears throat> Advocate rules to determine the capacity of a stiffened place, plates subjected to the combination of axial force and transfer load as in a bridge deck or scare or non-existing in the present euro code for uh, design of stiffening plates and uh, it should be developed uh, an approach uh, applying in detail fa analysis uh, will often not be feasible in practical design due to an often weak correlation between the very lo various loads we have many loads uh, traffic dead load uh, wind and so on uh, the traffic load is moving we have moving loads and uh, we have different load combination, often many load combination, and uh, loading levels in edge and sense bands, as well as many different cross sections along the bridge. So it's a quite difficult task. Uh, the study of the stiffening plate uh, in this paper was motivated by the actual design problem, a cross section like this, or a box girder like this, uh, with a suspension bridge, uh, as shown here. This uh, ended in a resistance calculation example, which we are going to show in this paper. And this, uh, the paper show how the different design codes predict the resistance for this uh, top deck. Um, the investigated deck panel uh, has cross beam or bulkheads located every four meter along the bridge. And uh, the bridge deck is assumed simply supported at the ends on this uh, cross beams. Uh, for determining the properties of the stiffening plate, it's convenient to consider just a typical strip only, as uh, shown here, with one U-formed uh, stiffener, U-shaped stiffener, and the belonging plate. And that's the same cross-section we also use to predict the resistance from the, the codes. This ended in uh, this uh, static model of four meter long uh, beam column, simply supported with axial force and uh, lateral load from, uh, with axial lo load and uh, lateral load from traffic. And uh, due to this statical system, uh, we only have to control two points at the middle, point one at the top and two at the bottom. And as we can see here, this is a highly monosymmetrical cross section and uh, the, stresses from banding is quite bigger at the bottom uh, compared with the top. The loading, uh, normal stress from global load action are assumed to be around 100 uh, square newton per square millimeter for this combination for local traffic loads. And uh, the banding action in a deck played from dead load and traffic may be set to an equivalent, equivalent distributed surface load equal to uh, uh, 131 kilonewton per square meter. In, uh, from the standard, you have to use uh, local axial loads as shown here, but we set it to an equivalent, equivalent distributed surface load. That's a quote that uh, is explained more clearly in the paper. Um, the, in, uh, the resistance for in-plane loading from the Euro code is uh, predicted with uh, the standard 993.15. And uh, here we use the effective width method and the uh, interaction procedure of clause 454. As we can see here, the web of the stiffener is uh, in clause 4, and we have got the ineffective area here from a local buckling, but the rest of the cross-section is effective. Out-of-plane loading is handled in the Eurocode 
uh, for elements subjected to out-of-plane loading. Uh, the same standard also refers to uh, the general standard 993.11 for interaction with the in-play loading, and then especially clause 623. But the, the problem here is that this clause mainly apply for double symmetric cross section. That, that's not uh, the case in, in our, uh, our uh, problem. So we, we did some research here and uh, we found out that um, the new uh, preliminary uh, draft of the same standard from September 2020 contains additional rules for uniform members with monosymmetric cross section. And in that standard, we have this interaction uh, formula, beam comal interaction formula, which is the same formula as in the present standard. <clears throat> but uh, in this standard, they have uh, an additional uh, interaction factor that uh, that uh, is, uh, could be used for monosymmetric uh, sections. And uh, that's good for us. Uh, it also sets that uh, requires that uh, the capacity check using uh, the characteristic moment resistance for determined from the compression flange. So we have to use uh, the characteristic moment resistance from the compression flange here. Uh, and then, okay, so that's uh, point number two, when I'm mom, number one, sorry. The last uh, part of education is not relevant for our, uh, our problem. Uh, we have no uh, sideways banding. We also tested the uh, other uh, design rules. Uh, the Norske Veritas DNV has a recommended practice for plate structure for design for structure in marine, marine environment such as ship hulls and offshore structures called uh, DNV RP C201. And it contains a complete design procedure for stiffening plates subjected to actual stress loading in two directions as shown here, plus in-plane shear stress and transverse loading as shown in this figure. This end with, uh, is up with uh, they, they treat the stiffening plate as a column or a strut uh, subjected to loading consisting of an effective normal force, NSD, as shown here, and effective lateral load, uh, as, sh as shown here. And for this, uh, and for uh, this beam column, uh, we simply support, once with two equations have to be checked, and, and this is the equation. Yes. Um, we also did the FA simulation to get the correct uh, answer for this problem non-linear effort simulation of the bridge deck. Uh, and we used the Abacus uh, 2019 program. Um, this, the panel we checked had a nine longitud longitudinal stiffeners with length of uh, four meters. That's equal distance between the cross beams. And the width of the model was almost five meters then. Uh, bow imperfection also, uh, is also included. The results of uh, this research is shown here. We uh, checked the different uh, actual levels from nil to 250 uh, Newton per square millimeter. The vertical axis here is the maximum lateral load we could uh, put on the, the model with uh, when it had 100% uh, ut utilization. And we can see here that the blue one here, Abacus, um, uh, predict the highest resistance of the, over the whole range. We have the pink one here, is, is the, which is our first order of stress summation. That's just for uh, get. Uh, we calculated that just to get something to compare with. The gray one here is DNV, and uh, the green one is a uh, euro code, and uh, they uh, are quite similar over the whole range. We remember that. Uh, for a typical top deck, 100 Newton per square millimeter was the actual load, actual stress, and uh, the lateral load was this. And we can see that uh, it's uh, it's quite uh, we have uh, enough resistance for this uh, this deck. The resistance is uh, around 200, so this top deck is uh, have the strength. Other observation is that uh, for uh, we can see there's an increasing resistance to transfer loading for axial stress from nil to 250 uh, newton per square millimeter. And the reason for this is, is that the point number two at the bottom is the governed point, and we have this, this stress distribution as shown here. 
uh, and we have a decreasing resistance for axial stress for 200 and 250 newt per square millimeter. Uh, that's the reason of this, that's the point number one at the plate side is the go one, and we have the stress distribution as shown here. Another <coughs> important observation is uh, that according to the pre preliminary standard, the resistance is to be determined with moment resistance for the compression flange. And this highly overdict the axial load levels for nil 50 and 100 Newton per square millimeter as shown here. So uh, here we have a highly overprediction uh, compared with uh, the abacus. So uh, if you introduce an additional resistance restriction based on yielding intention, that would close this uh, discrepancy. Conclusion, <clears throat> it's practical to consider a typical strip of the deck and to consider this as a beam column subjected uh, to axial force and transverse load. Um, the general standard 99311 does not give formulas that cover members with uh, monosymmetric cross sections under such loading and constraints, but the new preliminary one has included some new provision that's, uh, that apply. And uh, the utilization of the stiff neck was practically the same according to the preliminary real code and the offshore standard uh, as we checked. Thank you.